morning, welcome back. Um, this morning I wanted to talk about a subject that I'd read a small line from a, an article online that was another one of these moments where I didn't even realise it applied to me until I read it and it was it was an article about Asperger's and in the article it said um, they were taught they were generalizing and they were saying that people with Asperger's have an overriding urge to solve problems rather than to satisfy the social emotional needs and I kind of thought yeah, that's really on the money, I think. Um, whenever there's... Whenever there's a, um, an incident or a problem or... People need help. I am always the practical one. I'm always the one that's trying to solve the problem like in the here and now and give advice practical advice logical advice but I never address or stop to think about the emotional need or the emotional state of the person that has asked for help um, and that's true pretty much for any situation that I interact with other people in, I don't have at the forefront of my mind their, their social, not social, their emotional needs. Um, if they're telling me, as neurotypicals do, they, they like to share, they love to share a story, they love to share everything about their life, um, especially when things aren't going right. Um, and other neurotypicals respond to that with empathy and sympathy and they comfort that person um, I don't do that I don't really have the mechanisms to do that I listen to their problem or I listen to their what they're saying and I analyse it and think well actually there isn't a problem here nothing's nothing's happened that's worth getting this upset about enough um, what's happened can be easily fixed and if it's easily fixed then there there's no problem but I'm looking at it very black and white and in the cold light of day you know I'm detaching myself from the situation like I detach myself from every situation. Emotionally, I detach myself um, because emotion just gets in the way of getting things done. You know, your emotional state shouldn't interfere with getting on with life. It's how I kind of, I think I see it when if, if I boil it down and I analyse it. So the statement that I read saying, you know, I'm always interested in solving the problem rather than the emotional needs is bang on the money, really, for someone with Asperger's. Problem solving is, 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 the, is the priority in any situation. You know, um, I can imagine if there was a zombie apocalypse, you'd have lots of people running around in an emotional state that was stopping them from functioning or thinking properly or making decisions that were gonna save their life. Where someone with Asperger's wouldn't be, I'd be looking at everything very logically and practically and going, right, you know, where where's a safe place we can go? How are we gonna get food and water? Um, how are we gonna kill these things, you know? Um, I wouldn't let my emotional state 
rule my thinking, which is what I think, which is what I think NTs do always. It's always their emotional well-being that rules their actions, and that's quite a fundamental difference in how I live my life. You know, I, I live my life on being analysing it and making decisions based on probability and and certainty and I don't really do things that are just um, done in the heat of the moment that are emotion based that are going to ultimately on the whole turn out to be bad decisions um, I've made bad decisions normally though it's because I've I've read the situation wrong, but um, as you know in previous videos, I like watching podcasts and I like watching real crime podcasts. And um, it struck me one day when I was listening to I think it was Making of a Murderer, um, and a jury of twelve people found this guy guilty of a murder that I didn't think the evidence stacked up to point to his guilt and then they interviewed a few of the jurors afterwards and it, it, it appeared that they were how I was listening to it and understand was they were letting their emotions rule their decision the decision to basically condemn a man to death and I thought then what Really, if 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 jurors were all made up of people with Aspergers, how that would change? Because we're so good at analysing and problem solving, and just dealing with what's in front of us that we don't let our emotions blind our decision-making processes. And I thought, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if people with Aspergers could be professional jurors? That would solve the massive um, unemployment deficit in autistic and, and people with Asperger's in one foul swoop. Because most most people don't want to do jury service anyway. To be honest with you, you know, wouldn't that be great to have a job where you're, you're a juror and you're just going from one case to the next to the next and they know because you've been diagnosed with Asperger's that you could just be so analytical and detach yourself from your emotions that any decision you come to is based on probability and logic. Wouldn't that be great? I think it would. I've never been, I've never done jury service. I was asked very early on when I first started working and the way the, the, the reimbursement and payment system works in the UK, I was going to be out of pocket by a lot of money and my employer wasn't prepared to make up the deficit. So um, I got them to write me a note and basically um, got out of jury service. But it is something I, I think I would like to do. Um, but I thought that tied in nicely with the way I look at everything as a, a problem to solve. And then when the problem is solved, that's it for me. It's finished, finished, it's done with. And the way I look at it now is, I'm always the person you can rely on for the practical advice and to get a problem solved and to, and to sort a mess out that has to be sorted out. But then there are, there are, there are, there are so many neurotypicals to give you the emotional comfort that you need and the stability that you need that they can do that. They, you know, a lot of people couldn't, can't do what I do. Um, in the, you know, in the heat at the moment, be sort of that analytical and that logical, and just um, get get problems done in an emergency. I figure, well, if I, that's my bit. That's how I can help. That's the only way I know how to help. And then everyone else around you, well, that they they can they can comfort you after the event and, and help you with your emotional state because I'm just really not equipped to do that. Um, so I thought that was that, that was a nice little thing that um, resonated me with me when I read it. That the urge to solve the problem always overrides the the emotional needs. 
So there you go. Thanks for watching once again and see you soon.